Good day, this is Ron here, and we're going to talk a bit about how hackers attempt to fish you and what, really what you can do about it. So um, as we go through this conversation, again, I'm an educator. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'll just comment on some of these items and present some concepts to you. Uh, please like the video, and if you will, that helps with me spreading the word. Um, let's see any other items. I will leave my contact information in the YouTube area for you to get a hold of me if you have any questions. So here we go. Um, hackers attempt to fish you, how they do it, and really what we can do about it. Now, phishing attacks are becoming much more pre prevalent. We see it in on the news pretty much daily. Phishing attacks are what's really called social engineering. So if you hear someone talking about social engineering, Phishing attacks is one of the ways. Social engineering, the bottom line is trying to get you to do something that you probably wouldn't normally do. Uh, we've seen that in terms of, you know, the old school con man, I guess nowadays would be con person, <laughs> whatever. So someone trying to con you in some way, uh, con meaning confidence, trying to gain your confidence, gain your trust so you do something that you would not normally do. So social engineering is the larger umbrella. Phishing is one of the ways, several ways that uh, uh, that is attempted. So we'll cover several attacks, social engineering attacks. And we'll look at in particular phone call issues, email issues, social media issues. So first off, phone call issues. Let me go through some of these. By the way, I'll talk around this. I'm not gonna read you the slides, but you can read while I'm chatting away. Uh, anyway, uh, calls from unknown scammers it was one of the first ways that social engineering impacted us. So call from unknown numbers. You know, we get our cell phones now, whether it's a Apple or like a Samsung, um, and we get notifications. We don't know the caller, perhaps. It may be a friend that we gave our phone number to who we haven't contacted before, or it may be a new number. It could be a business that we uh, approve for, you know, to call us, or it could be more than likely a scammer. I hate to say that. Uh, a scammer will claim they're from a bank, a credit union, a credit card company. We've heard that before. Uh, they will attempt to get your account number, your credit card information, what have you. And one of the things you should do is immediately stop when somebody somebody's saying, I'm, I'm from Wells Fargo, just to verify your account, please give me your account number. Stop in your tracks. Don't give anyone any account information. Uh, you may also be asked to verify your phone number. Well, certainly they have that, but then they'll lead into something like, where do you work? Um, what's your address, and if you stop and think about it, they should have that information if they are a valid organization reaching out to you. Because the process is that whether we're with a bank or we register with a company that we do business, let's say REI or some other business, we've actually registered through their portal, provided them with the contact information, uh, other items that they should, are, if a legitimate company was calling you, should have that at their fingertips. So um, also calls from a known, unknown phone number. I put a little screenshot off to the right. It says reverse phone lookup. Um, the link right there is spokio.com slash reverse phone lookup. There's other, other reverse phone lookup uh, websites out there, but this one I trust. Uh, you can put in your own phone number, see how it works. Uh, they will give you some general information. For example, when I put my phone number in, it'll say, oh, the phone number is from a Verizon customer, and this person lives in Flagstaff, and they'll have other information masked out. And that's really enough uh, for me to know <laughs> that my phone number is valid, or another phone number is valid, uh, some cursory information. Um, that'll also give you information if the scammer calls you that it's a virtual number, it's from I don't know, India. So, you know, there, you can kind of scope that out that it may be a problem if it's uh, that kind of information shows up. They also, well, Spokio will also say, hey, it's 95 cents or a buck or two to receive other information. It's a website that is, uh, that gathers information about you and me and someone can actually pay for it. Oh, see, another email came through. So, um, but you can still use it as cursory information. Look it up. Uh, the service, again, want, wants you to pay uh, if you can, if it, that information, if you want to dig in deeper. 
So email issues, kind of along the same line as phone issues. We don't want to divulge any information. Over to the right-hand side, I have a screenshot of Gmail. Uh, Gmail, free service I use. Here's what to look for. Scan to see that the email address is correct. If it's someone you know and they say, hey, this is Bob. Uh, we talked, you know, where we, <laughs> I'm your friend and we work together, whatever. If you've dealt with them before, you certainly have their email address in your email address book. But if they've changed their email, you might text them and say, hey, Bob, I've just got an email from you. Is this your new email address? Kind of that due diligence. Or if they're working for a company that you're familiar with, if you work for a company and they send you an e email on their private, on your private email, if you work for ABC company, that's the example I have here, I just make sure it came from at abc.com and not from some other source that they're claiming uh, is from ABC. Uh, let's see, a couple of smaller items. Apologize for this eye chart of a PowerPoint slide. Uh, but the, if the eBit mail is not, whoops, let me get back here. I'm not going to cut this out, by the way. I'm just a regular guy. I'm not a uh, YouTuber. So if the email is not personalized and it has things like dear client, dear customer, and the email is from, I don't know, Wells Fargo Bank, allegedly. Wells Fargo has your information. They would have dear Ron if I banked with Wells Fargo or if you bank with, I don't know, Chase Bank and they would have dear Ron. And uh, also th some things you want to look for in the email that seems to be a little suspicious is grammatical errors misspellings, some malformed sentences. If you spot that, that may be an indication that someone stuck a generalized note in a translator app and just copied and pasted that. Translator apps are great. I use them all the time um, when I go traveling, but they do have some kludginess, including sen sentence fragmentation, even grammar errors, because we know that if we talk about bear, B-E-A-R, uh, is different in context than bear, B-A-R-E, right? So the translators don't often pick that up, so there could be grammatical errors. That's another telltale indication. Uh, does a message convey a sense of urgency? For example, I received an email well, a month ago. said, you had a new iPhone order, and it's going to be $1,400. Click here to verify your purchase. Number one, I never ordered an iPhone. Number two, I wouldn't order an iPhone from Amazon. I I use Verizon, I'd probably do that. Number three, I'm not going to click on a e uh, link in an email if I'm, I've am i got some suspicions rising. So uh, the immediate attention is, oh, $1,400. Sometimes with social engineering, a con man, a con person, would uh, confidence would try to not only gain your confidence smoothly, but then say, hey, you got to do this right away. We are, we as People, humans, are often shocked and we want to jump right ahead and do that action quickly to get that off of our plate. That's part of the uh, immediacy that hackers, scammers will try to do. So related to emergencies, they will also try to threaten you. I received an email uh, that said I was part of a class action suit um, and that I was actually being sued as part of a group of, I don't know, some... IT people, I guess, and something through that nature. I can't remember. It's been a while. I blew it off and blocked that email address. But it was threatening that I was part of this. I needed to get in contact with this lawyer and click this link. So that immediacy, that almost threatening, that uh, threat, the implied threat is that I would lose thousands of dollars if I didn't respond. So you'll see those kind of issues as well. The confidence gain that scammers use, they try to roll you in and freak you out. So also, uh, they'll send you documents or attachments and say download and fill this out uh, dot docx dot doc dot doc dot pdf i do teach a hacking course where i use kali linux and we craft uh let's say um, an attack that would be embedded in a document or a pdf when someone does download that it'll launch 
and call out and pull out some ransomware or, or launch perhaps some sort of virus on someone's system. We learn about that in an ethical hacking course, and we do it in an isolated environment so that doesn't get out. However, scammers aren't so friendly. They'll actually attach these documents and say, download this immediately, fill out your new address, and we'll send you, not only will you update your Wells Fargo account, but we'll send you a $500 gift certificate. Wink, wink, nod, nod, right? So uh, don't download attachments from unknown sources. I'm gonna talk a bit about attachments in a bit, in, in addition. Uh, email request, of course, such as uh, social security number, et cetera. The, uh, those type of calling for information, where do you work? Because then someone could build a better profile if they know where you work, if they have your ad physical address of not only your work, but home environment, maybe your phone number, they have your phone number for your work all of a sudden, they can build an attack profile for you. So we want to avoid that. And by the way, we'll also look at these. Um, if an email contains a link, certainly I don't click it. If, uh, if it's a, from a financial institution, a lot of times I'll get emails probably three or four times a month from these, quote, different financial services, uh, many of which I don't subscribe to, some which I do. And uh, I'll look, it'll have it at Gmail account. So Wells Fargo doesn't send stuff at Gmail. Uh, neither does Chase Bank, neither does, uh, you name the bank, they'll have their own institutional uh, email address. Again, you can look at, uh, uh, here's a list of 10 email sites. There's a, a lot of free email sites that we all can use for our benefit, but scammers do use them because they're cheap, they're free, right? So they'll less, less cost, most value, if you will, uh, uh, for a scammer, if you will. So free, free email is a good thing for us, but for a scammer who's mimicking an organization, an organization will not use a free email service. They can't get all the cybersecurity hooks into that that they want to, and it's kind of an open cesspool, if you will. So be careful with that. I do want to uh, mention a couple of items on social media because we're all into the social media area. Right now, social media is a great venue to stay connected for friends, family, on many platforms, and professional colleagues. We do use things like Facebook, but we also use things like uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn for professional. So be wary of any social media link requests from A, people that you don't know because Either they're trying to get more information by having you listed as a friend or a colleague. Um, that may be their intention, or they might be trying to, trying to market more eBooks and courses to you. I don't know, I don't particularly like adding, loading up the boat on Facebook or LinkedIn because I get too many offers as you probably do as well. Uh, or B, people that have one or a very few friends that you don't know, that may be part of a bot you can a scammer can set up a bot that has a very few um, friends and they'll say hey add me to your list I'll build up my number of friends wink wink nod nod they will get your information and they'll call that information what if you put hey I know I've seen this before hey I'm going on vacation for two weeks on Facebook number one I think that's a kind of a dumb idea you don't want to share your uh, whereabouts, but somebody could also, number two, uh, see that you are in Spain for two weeks because you're posting photos and videos of your lunch. So you want to be real careful with that. Um, other social media requests, LinkedIn from people, I, I, I mentioned this LinkedIn from, I don't want people selling me stuff that I don't really care about. Facebook, um, Facebook Marketplace as of late seems to be kind of a cesspool. Um, the environment is rich with scammers. I Initially, I thought it was a great thing, but now scammers are doing uh, adverse things. I'll, I'll mention one uh, that I've run into on a few times in just a second. And this is kind of how I've been scammed. All is not perfect in my cyber world, so I personally have to keep up with this. I've had years in cybersecurity and and I do things when I'm sleepy, when I'm hungry, and scammers will look for those time periods if uh, a lot of scamming goes on during the weekend hours or even during uh, the Friday when people are eager to leave, uh, they'll get an email from allegedly HR, update your profile before the paychecks come out. Click, they click on it, it's 4 p.m., they wanna get out of there, 5 p.m., next thing you know, they're owned. Over the weekend, uh, uh, you know, you don't have a full complement of staff for an organization or for an individual. Uh, you may be busy 
having fun, going shopping. You're, it's may not be as it attended. So here's a couple of items. Early on, I clicked, clicked on a link. It was about 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago. My system locked up with ransomware. Um, I had my, fortunately, I had my files backed up. I may have lost a document or two, but I had my backup um, in place. It was early on in the ransomware year, so the sophistication wasn't as great as now. So it was e easy to just re-image, uh, reload, and uh, be up and running. It took me a couple of hours, but nowadays uh, ransomware can be a lot more nefarious, a lot more uh, difficult to get off your system. So uh, do items like always back up your data, uh, keep good security, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Facebook book marketplace. A scammer for me wanted to pay immediately there, that immediacy. I want to pay for that item. It was like a rising desk thing I was trying to sell for 75 bucks. They're usually about 120 or so. Uh, so he was urgent. Ron, I'm out, going out of town. I want to pay for it now and I'll pick it up in two weeks. I thought, hmm, why doesn't he just tell me to put it on hold? So he says, he texts me, uh, basically, he's, he texts me and says, I want to go ahead and pay for it. Uh, I'm sending you a code. And on the other side, another message showed up. It was Google. It says, here's your code. And also in the body, it says, do not share this code. So I'm thinking, what does this guy think I'm a buffoon? He's basically attempting to reset my Google account, right? I know some people may have fallen for this. So what the motive was is to get me to look at that Google reset, give him the number in the other uh, text message. And at that point, he could lock up and change my account and I would be locked out of Google. And I keep a lot of stuff. I use Gmail. Uh, so I would be kind of hosed. I do back up everything, but still, it would be uh, concerning for me, let me put it that way. So that would be how I've been sc scammed. Some cautionary notes for you. Uh, the bottom line is always, always, always be cautious. Uh, there are times in our day that we get tired, we get frustrated, we get a little bit angry. Other times we're real centered. But when we're frustrated, angry, tired, those are the times when we may have a tendency to just say, okay, I'm going to click on this, get this thing done. I'm going to move on. I'm going to go and meet my friend and have a beverage at the bar. So uh, when we're tired and hungry, make sure that's a red flag for you to kind of slow down, take a breath. Um, if you're getting a phone call, getting email, uh, look at it carefully. Uh, also consider some sort of cybersecurity. I put hacking insurance, cybersecurity insurance. Uh, it's usually offered by you know good companies like Farmers, State Farm, Allstate uh, as an add-on to either a renter's policy or a homeowner's policy. It may help you on the financial a aspect, especially if you're you get owned, especially if your identity gets stolen. It may not cover everything, but look at your policy. It'll probably cover a lot to get you moving forward on that. In addition, always apply software updates for your operating system, for your PC, for your Mac, for your cell phone, uh, because most updates nowadays, I think the estimate that I saw was about 80 to 85% of updates have to do with security updates. So you wanna keep on top of that so no one wiggles through uh, with known compromises. Apply also updates to software from known from your vendors. I use, as an example, Adobe. I also use some Oracle products. So I'll constantly update those because uh, because those, again, are typically patches to prevent some sort of malware getting through. Always have good virus protection. I want to emphasize this. Uh, please spend some money on it. Don't be it. I used to try to get the free stuff. And if you look on the web, do a Google search, some of the free stuff actually has malware embedded in it. So free is not always free. Uh, free can contain tracking software and other nefarious type of items. Go with a known company. Buy Trend Micro, buy Semantic, buy... Uh, uh, there's other companies out there, not... I got a whole list anyway that you can find uh, that are very valuable. Uh, very viable. Um, it will cost you uh, 20, 30, 50 bucks a year, uh, but you'll have that and you can always update that. It'll, it's good endpoint protection. A lot of that uh, software, I, I do use Trend Micro and I have Semantic on my other system. Uh, so a lot of that software will also do email scanning. So it'll scan your email as well. Uh, so get that. Uh, 
avoid the free stuff because free is what you get is free and you get a lot of free stuff with it like tracking software and potentially viruses so that's kind of a summary i do go over a lot of these items in a lot more detail in uh, with a ceh course that i'm developing but this is for general consumption general awareness and i hope you've enjoyed it uh, what we have covered just in, as a recap are the phone call issues the email issues, social media issues. And this is not a comprehensive list. This is just an educational piece tidbit for you. And I hope I hope you've enjoyed it. So thank you very much. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know of any other content you'd like me to create and share with you. Be glad to do it and have a good day. Talk to you soon.